rarely one to pull punches, Donald Trump tonight made clear with an eye to his possible upcoming summit with North Korea's Kim Jong-un, if things don't work out before or during, he'll Thank walk. If I think that it's a meeting that is not going to be fruitful, we're not going to go. If the meeting when I'm there is not fruitful, I will respectfully leave the meeting. Trump's comments after a meeting today with Japan's Prime, Prime Minister uh, Shinzo Mr. Abe President. come as the U.S. was buzzing over that possible meeting with Kim. Aimed at denuclearizing North Korea, the summit seemed ever closer, with word CIA Director Mike Pompeo, Trump's nominee to be the next Secretary of State, had just secretly visited North Korea for direct talks with Kim. He just left North Korea, had a great meeting with Kim Jong-un. Tweeted Trump today, a good relationship was formed. Tonight, despite Trump's warnings things had better go his way, the president underlined, we hope it all works out, we'll be trying very hard. Not so long ago, all of this would have seemed unthinkable as the two countries traded threats and insults. Former U.S. Secretary of State Colin Powell today called Pompeo's visit positive. I think it's good to talk rather than threaten bombing each other. And consider there's another summit looming as well involving the leaders of North and South Korea. That one aimed at ending, finally, the Korean War. Actual fighting stopped in 1953 with a truce. But for a variety of reasons, the two countries technically remain at war. For decades, lingering as a kind of high-stakes staring match, backed up by U.S. troops in the demilitarized zone. Bottom line, lots could be changing on the Korean peninsula and soon. Said Trump tonight, he'll do what he can to make this, as he put it, a worldwide success. Paul Hunter, CBC News, Washington. Now, our Sasha Petrasik has been watching the developments from Beijing, where it is now Thursday morning. So, Sasha, it's been such a winding road and hard to forget the insults, right? Little Rocket Man, the dotard, all of it being flung back and forth. Remind us when and how things started looking up in the first place. Well, Andrew, it looked like there was a, a thaw in the middle of the Winter Olympics just a couple of months ago. South Korea invited the North to come down and participate. Not only the athletes came, but high-level officials came as well. There were talks, there were toasts, and the stage was set for what looked like uh, a progress that we haven't seen in quite some time. Uh, but, you know... There's nobody who really wants this deal more than the president of South Korea, President Moon Jae-in, uh, though his, fee his people in South Korea tend to be a lot more skeptical. They don't really trust the North. They say we've been down this road before. There have been many broken promises on both sides, and they're really not thinking that this is going to happen. They're thinking that, in fact, this is a very fragile situation right now, and that given that we don't even know where or when Donald Trump could meet uh, Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea, that this is all still very much on the drawing board. But I suppose we should note it's, it's not just South Korea playing an important part in these potential talks. That's right. It's not just South Korea, and it's not just the United States. Uh, South Korea, of course, is pushing very, very hard for some kind of an agreement. Uh, on the other hand, you have Japan, uh, who Donald Trump is meeting with right now. They have been saying that the United States should not agree to anything until there is clear progress, literally until North Korea is dismantling its nuclear missiles, taking the bolts out and carting the whole thing away. And, of course, there's China. Here in Beijing, there's a lot of attention on the prospect of these talks. You know, China historically is North Korea's closest ally. There was a period of a bit of a freeze in relations. They weren't even talking to one another. Now China is back, and you can be sure that anything North Korea agrees to uh, in these talks with Donald Trump, if they happen, that that will be sounded off the Chinese and that the Chinese would have to agree to it. So this is much more complicated than just simply two leaders sitting down and trying to hash out a deal. Indeed. Sasha Petrasik, thanks very much. So we know there is skepticism out there about these proposed talks. That's in part because North Korea has been consistently inconsistent 
After provocation, Pyongyang often shows a sunny side, which doesn't last. Let's go back to the early 90s. Revelations of North Korea's nuclear program sparked a crisis. Then Pyongyang turned around and offered talks. In 1994, North Korea agreed to dismantle its reactors in return for aid. This agreement will help to achieve an end to the threat of nuclear proliferation on the Korean Peninsula. But implementation was glacial. There were missile tests, a naval battle, then smiles. In 2000, then U.S. Secretary of State Madeleine Albright met with the North Korean leader at the time, Kim Jong-il. After flattery, gifts, and fine dining, an end to North Korea's nuclear weapons program seemed in sight. But about a year later, Pyongyang admitted it played a double game. North Korea was pursuing a covert uranium enrichment program. That regime was deceiving the world and developing those weapons all along. George W. Bush talked tough, but got the same runaround. Pyongyang joined disarmament talks in fits and starts, setting off its first nuclear test in 2006. And then it agreed to shut down a reactor in exchange for fuel oil. Except that agreement, too, fell apart as did another one with the Obama administration in 2012. So when it comes to these latest proposed talks, Trump's own director of national intelligence offered this last month. Maybe this is a breakthrough. Um, I seriously doubt it. Trump's summit with Kim Jong-un could be historic, or it could be history repeating itself.